Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Trollis, Director of Fertility Care at the IVF Center in Orlando, Florida. Infertility affects one out of eight women and couples. It is a devastating disease. Almost eight million people in the United States are experiencing this. We don't always know why, and everyone has their own story. It is a devastating problem, and you probably know someone who's experienced this. Everyone who goes through infertility has their own story to tell. We have the unique opportunity of sharing with you a couple that has allowed us into their lives throughout their entire journey of the most advanced technology available today called in vitro fertilization or IVF. This couple's story is about love. The love for each other and the love for their unborn baby. We are proud to present to you the story of Mohammed and Piper. Hi, I'm Piper, and my husband and I are doing IVF for the third time. Okay. <laughs> my name is Mohammed. My friends call me Mo, and my wife and I are doing IVF. Remember when um, we first met and used to stare at me on top of the Himalaya? Oh, because everyone's going to know what you mean when you say Himalaya. <laughs> the Himalaya ride. I remember you were all lonely and I was like, man, she looks like she can use a friend. Let me go say hi. Because I was new. You had to start with I'm a new girl. Yeah, you were the new girl. I mean, that's true. You were the very new girl. You and your friend. You guys came in and I was running the show. You were stalking me because you no. were like looking at me and no, creepily I wasn't. and like. Every time distance. I would look over, every time I would look over, I'd see you staring me down. Because and I, I felt think, like, someone's what in the eyeballs world, in the back of my head. What and in I had the to world is her problem? Why does she keep staring me down? <laughs> Finally, I walked I over and at said, you "Hi, you <laughs> how's it going?" <laughs> I was staring <laughs> I mean, at you be because honest, you were staring yeah. at me. Well, it's and I felt on it. camera. It is on camera that you were staring at me. Okay, because I don't know really should we that. ask everybody that was there who yeah, are actually? You go ask everybody that was you there. You know my personality. I'm very shy. You That's think I'd go up to you at all? I don't think. No, so. I just think you stared me down for an hour until I was like, "This is freaking me out. Let me go check out what this girl's doing." <laughs> That's a lie. That's the truth. You know I didn't do that. <laughs> You couldn't wait to, especially when we were meeting, you were like, <laughs> new girl? <laughs> yeah. I was like, uh, <laughs> hi. Four legs. What do you want to sell? You want to get your hair cut? Oh. I wonder who's, uh, is it Dave on the show? It is. Hey, really? Yeah, it is. Um, yeah. Dave's Barbershop. Cool. Nice. I used to get my hair cut here all the time. Not here. He had, he had a shop. You should definitely go and make your hair cut. No, I'm not going to get it cut. And way too crazy. An important question that we need to address as we go through IVF is how many embryos to transfer. And whereas many of our patients want to have twins because they've been waiting so long to have a family, twins is a high-risk pregnancy. And our profession needs to do everything possible to reduce that complication because twins increases the risk of complications to you and baby. Baby more premature, uh, respiratory neurologic issues, low birth weight, uh, severe handicap issues, as well as even death. So our guidelines uh, are through the Society of Assisted Reproductive Technology, or SARP. And the younger the patient and the more favorable prognosis, we transfer less embryos. So we use the younger the patient and if there are extra embryos to freeze. And given your age, we would definitely recommend a single embryo to transfer. Now, something else to think about is what day to do the transfer. Day three or day five. And this gets to be a sticky subject for patients because 
If we grow everybody's embryos to day five, there will be 10% or less of patients that may not have any embryos to transfer. Right. So if no embryo developed to day five, a patient could say, hey, why didn't we transfer on day three? Or would it have resulted in a pregnancy if it was on day three? It's an unanswerable question. But in good prognosis patients, we really recommend going to day five. And if there's extra embryos, and particularly since we're doing the two-step to freeze, we'll have extra embryos. Mm -hmm. So we recommend day five. It's more physiologic. That's when the embryo actually makes it into the uterus anyway. Okay. Okay. And I think you had asked about what activity after embryo transfer. Mm -hmm. For years, we said bed rest for at least several days. And more evidence is coming out in the medical literature to show there's absolutely no reason for that. So we have our patients right after the transfer just resume normal activity. No severe exertional activity, but just regular activity to allow them to get back to their, their qualities of life and regular living. And actually studies suggest that staying at home and staring at the ceiling could cause more stress and you don't know what kind of a negative sense. impact that could play. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there any other questions you could think about for your upcoming IVF cycle? Oh, I can't think of any. Can you think of No, any? I think you pretty much answered all the questions we had. Great. Mm -hmm. Great. I want you to know that we are praying for you and the entire staff put so much effort into all their patients. Any questions that you have along the way, don't hesitate by phone call, using the patient portal. This is all about you. Your problem is my problem. And we're going to take you by the hand and walk you through this process. And we want you to know that this is your place for support, hope, encouragement. And we're going to do everything we can to make this cycle perfect for you. Awesome. We're so thankful. We're so thankful. Thank you so much. No, my pleasure. I think I think the reason we chose Dr. Charles is because he's he's probably one of the best doctors I've ever met, really honestly. Yeah, he's like the, he is the kindest doctor, you know, yeah, we've he's ever a, He's a good doctor, he listens to us and I just feel like he really cares. Yeah, I get that feeling too. That, you know, he wants mm -hmm. us to succeed. Yeah. I mean we've tried it with, with several other doctors and they're okay, but I think with Dr. Charles um, he remembers us and he remembers everything about us and about you and um, it was a, it's a great experience. Mm -hmm.